So, uh, Facebook has lifted their news ban and everything's back to normal, yeah? Well, not quite so simple. What can we learn from this whole experience with the Facebook news ban? And more importantly, what do we make of the news bargaining media code as it currently exists? I've spoken to Green Left journalist and Social Alliance member Zeb Parks about the issue. It's undemocratic what Facebook has done, and Facebook has become a service that's been used by numerous different community groups, organisations, public services, news outlets and so forth, and Facebook has managed to basically shut down large parts or disable large parts of its site without any public accountability or consultation or actually anything or any engagement with the people that use the site. The news media bargaining code was never really good legislation even to begin with. Bill does nothing to actually support community media, for instance, or community media grants or anything like that. And instead it's just sort of redistributing advertising revenue at the top end of town. A lot of people seem to think that if you're critical of the code, then you're team Facebook. And if you're not critical of the code, then you're team Murdoch or something, which is an utterly bizarre way of falling into both of those camps because they're both really just one sort of like new capital, one's old capital, but they're both big capital. As far as why I'm very critical of this bill, it's because I think this bill doesn't actually address any of the things that need to be addressed, such as funding for community media, funding for journalism, reversing the caps to the ABC, of which there's been more than $700 million cut from the ABC over the last several years by this government since 2014. Then there is the question of the amendments that Facebook was able to secure from the government in order, for the, in order to, to get to support this legislation. The ABC reported that in a series of calls between Mr Zuckerberg and Mr Frydenberg, the social media behemoth negotiated small but important changes that mean there's a good chance the code may never be used at all. Among them was the provision that before a digital platform is made subject to the code, the treasurer must first take into account whether it has reached commercial agreements with the news media businesses. The ABC also reported that Facebook is likely to end up paying less money after the amendments that were made. Under the code, Facebook would have, would have had to negotiate with news producers according to strict rules, Professor Lever said. Now, those deals are being struck behind closed doors. Getting deals done before or after around the code means Facebook is still calling a lot of the shots in terms of what the contracts specify, Professor Lever said. So, what is the answer? I mean, the simple answer is to just tax them. I feel it can show you how far to the right this conversation has gotten, that it's a lot of voices, including the left, seem to be pulled into this idea that they need a very cute kind of system of like forcing Facebook and Google to negotiate with big media companies to get money. And it's kind of like, but the simple reason is, is you just tax them. I mean, Facebook and Google pay very little tax and the Murdoch's media pays zero tax in this country. I mean, if you have a proper corporate tax rate for these corporations, then you can reverse the cuts to the ABC, then you can fund community media, you can fund artist grants, you can actually find ways of building alternative social media platforms that are accountable to the people who are using them rather to one majority shareholder. You can actually find ways of supporting people who are developing content. The Green Left page, like other Australian media, is back up online, but Green Left and other community media still need your support. It's important to support community media organisations getting their content, and a lot have been really badly hit by this ban, where Facebook was becoming one of the main sources people were engaging with or sharing their content. So we should look at, people should look into different ways of following them. You can follow Green Left on Twitter, Instagram, you can also go to the website regularly, you can become a supporter. And you can sign up to the email list and get weekly emails about all the articles that are coming out. There's different ways you can stay in contact with Green Left. I also think this can be seen to some extent as a bit of an opportunity or a wake up call to the left and progressive media of the power that Facebook does have to shut everything down overnight and then thinking about what are actually alternatives that we can build and alternative ways of connecting with people through this.